Okay guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are covering custom SQL queries in Java Spring Boot. So, so far, we have only been using the built-in JPA slash hibernate methods like repository.save or repository.findById. So under the hood, these methods are calling SQL queries, but we never had to actually write them. But what if you need to write a custom SQL query? Perhaps you're doing something very specific or need explicit control. Well, that's where the at query annotation comes in, and we're going to put it at the repository level. A couple things to note before we get started. This is not a Spring Data JPA tutorial, although that is coming. It'll probably be the next video. And this is not an SQL course, so you will not be an expert in SQL by the end of this video. This is just a starter point so that you know how to do it. And we will cover native query. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, we'll get to it. Okay, today's lesson is going to start in MySQL Workbench. So make your way over. Make sure to run this query, use no BS. And then I want you to type in this query, select star from product P, where P dot price is less than say 200. And what this SQL query will do is it will look through our product table and it will look at the price and will only return the list of products where the price is less than 200. So if you run this, we only get one result and the price is 120. Let's change this to say less than 400. And so now we're getting the PlayStation 5 at 399 and the microphone at 120. So this is the query we want to run and we want to convert this to a method in Java. So let's make our way back over to our project. So here's our product repository and we're going to add a new method. Our method name is going to be find products with price less than. It's going to return a list of product. For now, we're not going to do a product DTO. We're just going to do the whole product. Now, this is where the magic happens. So we're going to say at query. And then we're going to copy that SQL statement and bring it over here. Make sure to import. And we're going to import this first one, data.jpa.repository. Coming back over to SQL, go ahead and copy this and paste it in. Now this isn't exact, but this is where we'll start. This does need to be in parentheses. So we need to do a couple things to this statement to get it to work. So first, remove the semicolon. Second, we're going to change the star to a P for product. And then we need to change this 400. This needs to be dynamic. So whatever we pass into this method should be the number that we search for. So in order to do that, we do colon, and then we need to put in a variable name. So our variable name is going to be max price. So looking through, we have select P, from product P, where P dot price is less than max price. And this colon is what tells Spring Data JPA, hey, this is a variable name that can be used in the method. So coming into our method, we're going to say at param. This should look familiar. Uh, this is similar to what we do on the uh, controller level. So if you come back and look at the controller level, we have an annotation right here, path variable. So similar setup at param, put in quotes the name of your variable. So we called it max price. And then it will be a double and we'll call it max price. And there we have it. We now have a method name with a custom SQL query select P from product where P dot price is less than max price. And we can now use this in our product. So every time we call this method, it will be running this statement. 
So let's create a new endpoint and actually use this method. So coming back to our product controller, we'll come up here to the top and we'll say at get mapping public response entity and we're just going to do a list of product we're not going to use the DTO right now list of product we'll say find product by price this is perhaps not the best name we're just trying to get going here and for now I'm not going to abstract it out into a query handler I'm just going to do it right here on the controller so we can see what's happening of course you can come in later and move all these methods around so that it makes more sense with our project so we're going to need our product repository so product repository dot and now we have access to our method find products with prices with price less than it takes in a double now we need to get that double so let's create a mapping here and we'll say slash search slash squirrely braces max price so if we come down here and see how we did this we did path variable and this is how we were able to grab this variable from our mapping so we're going to do the same thing here at path variable double max price and then we're going to pass in max price and we need to of course return now of course this returns a response entity so we'll say response entity dot okay and then the body is going to be that list of product okay let's go ahead and run this and see if it's working while that's booting up we'll create a new endpoint in postman so it's going to be slash products slash search slash max price so I'm going to duplicate so get all products this should be search products max price so we have products slash search and this will be our max price so let's put in 200 our program is now up and running let's see if it's working and we got the product we were expecting our Bluetooth microphone at 120 let's raise this to 400 and make sure we are also getting the PlayStation and there we have it PlayStation and microphone and we'll raise this up one more time to make sure we are getting everything now and now we are also getting the Xbox so great we were able to implement our custom message now one thing to think about this is probably not the best way to do this a query string parameter is probably a better idea on how to do this but we haven't got to that point we're going to cover that in a future video I'm just trying to explain to you how we can do a custom query on our repository level okay moving on let's do one more example coming back to MySQL I'm going to comment out this line I do that by hitting command slash oh it didn't want to do it so we'll just say dash dash space and now it is commented out it will ignore it we're then going to add uh, this new SQL query so select p.name comma p.description comma p.price from product p semicolon let's run this and this returned only the name description and price it did not return the ID and it did not return the quantity now the reason I did it this way is because in our project we have a DTO our DTO or data transfer object only has name description and price so this will be the next SQL query we build in Java where we only get the three things that we need directly from the database 
One thing to note is when we built our query handler before, we ended up getting all of the products in the repository. We went through each one and then we mapped them to a product DTO. So what happened is we got all five parameters from the database and then just threw two of them away in memory before we returned it back to the caller. So this is certainly one way to do it. A more efficient way would be to just get the data straight from the database uh, without actually loading everything into memory that you don't need. So it just depends on the situation. Perhaps you need every field to perform some sort of computation before you return a, sh a shortened list uh, back to the caller. But in this case, there's no need to query the database for more data than we actually need. So that's the next query we're going to run. So coming back to our product repository, we're going to create another method. So we'll say at query, and then we're going to return a list of product DTO. And we're just going to say get all product DTOs and import. So coming back to MySQL Workbench, let's copy this query and bring it over. So just like the last one, we will have to do a few things to make this work. So first, delete the semicolon at the end. And you may have forgotten, but if we look at our DTO, we actually need a new constructor. So we have name, description, and price, and we need to take those three parameters and shove it into to create a new DTO. Right now, we're doing that from a product, but we need to do it with just three parameters. So we're going to create a new constructor. Public product DTO. String name, string description, double price. This dot name is equal to name. This dot description is equal to description. And this dot price is equal to price. Okay, so now we have what we need to actually handle the rest of this. So I'm going to replace p.name, p.description, and p.price with this. We need to do a new, and then we need to tell Spring Boot what we're creating. So we're telling it, go in our project, look in this folder structure, com, example, demo, product, model, product DTO, and then use this object to generate a new Java object from these parameters that we get from SQL, p.name, p.description, p.price. And this is the same order that we passed it in in our DTO, name, description, and price. Now, if we look closely in our product folder structure, we see com.example.demo, which matches up with com.example.demo. We then have product. Within product, we have model, so product, model, within model, there is a product DTO, and within this product DTO, we have a constructor with name, description, and price. So that's essentially how this is working. It's telling it exactly where to go in the folder structure, look for this object, and try to instantiate this object uh, using these three parameters that we get from SQL. So coming back to our repository, we just created our new method and so we just created our new method now let's try to use it so if we come back to our get all products query handler remember we originally took our product repository and used the built-in method find all we then streamed through it mapped it to a dto threw away a couple parameters collected it to a list and then returned it so instead let's try to do this a little bit differently Instead of doing all this, let's use our built-in method. So product repository dot get all product DTOs. 
Let's rerun it and see what happens. So this was at our at products endpoint. So let's see. So get all products. So get all products. Send. And there we have it. We are getting just name, description, and price directly from SQL using our custom SQL query. And this actually saved some memory in Java Spring Boot. So we made it a little more efficient. Okay, so obviously this was just a surface level explanation of how to make your own custom methods with your own custom queries. Uh, using just these ideas, you can mix and match and pretty much make whatever you want. Uh, one other thing I would like to point out is known as native query. So if I come here, at the end of this string, I can pass in parameters, one of them being native query equals true. And this added value equals, and this added value equals to the string plus a native query with a parameter of true. And essentially what this does is it says, okay, this is a native query that is native to my SQL. So we're assuming that this query will only work in MySQL and it will not work in Postgres. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, perhaps you're building a system and you want to be database agnostic, meaning we're using MySQL right now. Maybe in the future, uh, we want to use Postgres or some other form of SQL. Uh, well, if you do native query, uh, that says, no, you can't go to another database. You have to use the one we're using here. Um, if you keep this off, then it actually transcribes it into a JPA format so that JPA will be able to take this and convert it to any other type of database uh, if you end up switching in the future. So that, that's really esoteric and more high level thinking, but I did want you to know that there are other parameters uh, that you could pass in to your at query annotation.